didn't say hello to you, Christy and, and Joe. So hi there. Hey, morning. Hello. Thank you for, for joining us on this lovely, lovely morning. So and I believe it looks like Grant and Stacy are have joined us from the Capitol. Morning. Morning, y'all. Good morning. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Stacy's got her green pants on. <laughs> Grant, Grant, where's where's the green at? It's high. Ah, I can't say no. I can't say. Hot socks. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Right, I do apologize for the delay. Uh, we're moving back into the capital, or some of us are, and. Uh, new technology in a new conference room and it really wasn't cooperating with me today so i apologize um so do we have a quorum no everybody's here all right so we will go ahead and call this meeting to order thank you all for being here today and let's go ahead and the minutes were sent out prior to the meeting so I'll give everybody a second if there are any changes or additions or addendums that we need to make, and then I would entertain a motion to approve. All right, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as we're presented? Hey, Grant, it's Joe. I, I move to approve the minutes as presented. Thank you, Joe. Is there a second? I second. Uh, very good. Thank you, Christy. All right. With all of that, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Minutes are approved. Next, we'll move into the director's report from Fran. Great. Thank you, Grant. Uh, just a few things to update. Um, at the last board meeting in November, we were scheduled uh, to present to the special needs ministry at Fellowship Bible Church in West Little Rock, but due to, that was going to be an in-person presentation, uh, but due to some last minute dropouts, we had to cancel that. However, um, it turned out that the, the five or six people that had planned to attend had children with autism and we had already scheduled a presentation with the Autism Outreach Center uh, for a Zoom meeting in December. So we were able to extend, since they couldn't attend the one in November, we were able to invite them and extend the invitation for them to be part of our bigger Zoom in December uh, through the Autism Outreach Center, and that, that turned out to be a very good presentation. We had probably about 15 or 18 folks on that call, and um, if, if I remember, we did have a few follow-up calls and questions uh, following that, so that's always a good sign. Um, and then in January, we did a similar presentation to the Arkansas Down Syndrome Association, and we had about 12 people on that call, so uh, we we kind of took a hiatus during during the holidays, but now with uh, you know things picking back up and, and the world kind of shaking the cobwebs out, uh, we're going to amp back up and try to schedule some more uh, zooms and possibly in person uh, for this summer. And then also, uh, I really want to focus on reaching out to some of the schools around Arkansas that specialize in uh, special needs uh, families. Then we, from a sponsorship uh, standpoint, we were contacted by the Developmental Disability Provider Association about their uh, conference in the spring and we will be uh, a sponsor of that again. And just as a reminder for you all, it's, and I, most of you probably know this, that they have, it's a 68, 68 members belong to this and their uh, community programs 
that provide medical care and related services to families with disabilities. And uh, our sponsorship comes with a booth, with uh, advertising, website promotion, and an opportunity to distribute some of our promotional items to about 200 people. Then the last thing is administrative rules. Uh, at, at the last meeting we talked about, we needed to amend the ABLE rules to kind of clean up some language that was uh, unused, that was existing in the ABLE plan description. And last October, we went through the public posting and public hearing phase, did not have any questions or opposition. So the rules were submitted and approved on December 16th and have been filed with the Secretary of State's office. Um, the last item or the next item on the agenda is the legislative update. And I'm actually going to uh, let Grant kind of fill you in on the ABLE bill uh, that's been introduced and, and what the, the kind of three primary things that it's seeking to do. Well, cool. thank you, Fran. So we have filed HB 1648 uh, with Representative Mayberry. This was one that actually did come late uh, in the session. And, and it was one of those kind of, we had a few little items, uh, but until all the little items kind of bubbled up, um, we were kind of hesitant to run just one bill doing one little thing. Um, so in talking with Representative Mayberry, we were able to file a bill that accomplished three things. There was some technical uh, language that needed to get corrected in the legislation. It actually dealt with dis dis disbursements and refunds regarding school and scholarship. That was 529 language that inadvertently got added in from the original draft of the bill. So we were getting that cleaned up and getting uh, that taken off the table. Um, we are also doing a carry forward provision similar to the 529 plan. This would allow someone that, you know, maybe there's a windfall that comes in in one year or uh, play out more of a realistic scenario. Maybe there's a case settlement. Uh, there was a lawsuit and you had a settlement and you ended up getting a windfall of money, you would be able to deposit up to five times that amount and carry it forward for four years. So your five times the 5,000 for a single individual, you would be able to put 25,000 in one year, get your 5,000 for that first, that current year that you're in and then carry it forward, the remaining balance of the 20,000 over the next four years. Um, so we've got that provision. And then finally, the last provision is, uh, there's a quirky little thing with employee benefits for state employees. You actually have to have legislation to make payroll deduction options available for certain things. So we are including in this bill, a, the ability for state employees to payroll deduct in directly into their ABLE plan. Uh, so those are the th three things that we're trying to accomplish. Uh, we're negotiating committee assignments right now. It kind of got put into uh, one committee that we don't really want it to be in because there's a long agenda. And so we're trying to get it pulled over into revenue and tax, which has a shorter agenda to work with and keep us on track to get it passed through this session. Um, there, I, there's no opposition. Um, this is a pretty straightforward bill. There should be no impact, but I'm studying that uh, this morning just to verify that. Um, but outside of that, everything should go pretty quickly once we're able to get the, the ball rolling on it. Um, is there any questions on, on legislation or anything like that? Uh, what bill, did you say what bill number that was? Uh, House Bill 1648. Fran, okay. double check me on the numbers. I think I think it's 1684. Okay, I, I, yeah, I'm dyslexic with numbers, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. I just wanted... 1684. Okay, I just wanted to research it because, you know, we have the ABLE account information in our Medicaid services policy manual. 
So if this legislation passed, we might have a policy update that I need to look at. Okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so because of the change that we're making really referred to uh, education expenses and the way that those were to be treated uh, after tax. So I'm hoping y'all didn't do anything policy wise but that would probably be the only thing that you would want to check. Right. I just need to double check, make sure that we're in line. Yep. Yep. Grant, would this Thank be retroactive you. to January 1 or would it start next year? It would be, it would go into effect uh, 90 days after sign and die, but it would be for tax year 2020. Okay. Okay. So it'd be retroactive. So Don, I, I think we're going to probably, you, we won't call we don't call it supplementing the label, but we're probably going to need to uh, update the wrapper. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we will. Um, my one question is on the carryover provision, um, which I think is great. Um, my only concern is that there is a $15,000 contribution limit each year for ABLE. So I'm just not sure how that would impact it. It, it does. It, it would just limit you to three years okay. instead of the four. Um, okay. Okay. But for sim simplicity in drafting, we kept it equal to what the 529 was. But you're exactly right. With the 15 per year, it would only limit you to three-year ability. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Thank you. So they, so yeah, okay, I, I see what you're saying, Don. Yeah, so they wouldn't be able to make the the whole twenty five thousand dollar contribution in in a year anyway. It would be, they would want, it'd be limited to the cap, and then and then moving three years forward. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good call. I'm done. Anybody? Uh, Grant. Anything else to add? No, any other questions or anything? The only thing I would add is as we kind of continue to ramp up the outreach, please just keep praying. If you've got anybody in mind, uh, an interest group, an advocacy group, anything like that, please uh, circle back with Fran, make sure she's in the loop um, because she'll definitely get out there and meet with anybody and everybody. Uh, but just making that connection would be beneficial as well. All right, our next uh, item is uh, the census report with uh, Dawn and Dave. Dawn, you want to share your screen? Uh, yeah, I am unable to share it right now. Chris, would you, yeah, give permission. Yeah, Chris, you're going to have to get that setting fixed. <laughs> okay, you should be good to go, Dawn. All right, thank you. Yep, there we go. All right. So as you can see, um, this informa the information here is based on the entire year of 2020, as well as year to date for quarter one, 2021. So we saw quite a few accounts uh, being closed in the month of January, uh, I'm sorry, within the first quarter of 2021, 2020. Sorry, um, this was due to we had a large influx of accounts being opened using the Arkansas Progress Promise Program. Um, and we did notice that when these funds were placed in these accounts, they were immediately withdrawn and the account was uh, put to zero. So that is the only anomaly that we are seeing. Um, for the entire year of 2020, Almost 300 accounts were open, 296, with 240 of those accounts being closed. And throughout the year, we did notice approximately six accounts were reopened within the 2020 year to start making contributions to them again. So far to date for Q1 2021, there have been 45 accounts opened and 20 of those have been closed. Then we look at 
how were the accounts opened? Were they opened online or were they opened with a paper enrollment application? And it looks like for 2020, there was a little more for the paper enrollments versus online enrollment. And then for Q1 so far, we're actually looking at online enrollments are almost double what paper enrollments are, which is great. Contributions and withdrawals, they were very, very active um, for 2020. Um, contributions, we received $1.1 million, I'm sorry. Yeah, $1.1 million in assets with $339,000 being withdrawn, which gave us a positive cash flow of 834,000. And then for Q1 2021, so far to date, we have a positive cash flow of $256,000. Any questions before I go to the next slide? All right. So as you can see, um, the type of accounts that are being enrolled the majority at this point are the parent guardian of a minor child, almost uh, just over 50% of the accounts in the Arkansas ABLE program are opened by a parent guardian. Then we have self-administered. Uh, we have about 36% of those. And then somebody with an authorized individual, we're at about 13%. Any questions here? Okay. So here we see the assets by fund. And as you can see, the majority of the assets in the Arkansas ABLE program are in the moderate option with the checking option coming in about 11% less. And the least is in the growth option of just under 5%. Accounts and assets by eligibility. So the majority of the accounts that are being opened are being opened by individuals who are eligible for SSI benefits. And then the next one is the disability certification. For assets, we are seeing the same thing. 51% of them are in the Social Security income benefits at $900,000. And then for the disability, it's 540,000. And then for the SSDI benefits, about $327,000 in assets. As we look at another way, uh, this is accounts and assets by disability type. We can see that a majority of the accounts do have some sort of developmental disorders, including autism, followed by intellectual disability. And again, looking at about half a million dollars in assets for the developmental and just over $400,000 in assets for the intellectual disability. This is another good picture. There were 376 accounts currently enrolled in the checking option. And for the month of February, 57% of those accounts had the $2 fifth third monthly maintenance, maintenance fee waived. And 159 of those were charged a fee. Now there are two ways that they can waive the fee. They can select e-delivery or have an average account balance over $250. So it looks like a lot, the majority of those are signed up for e-delivery with a small amount with the average balance over $250. Hey, this Dawn. Next slide. Yep. I'm sorry, before we move off that slide. Yep. Is there is there any information on the accounts that do not have the fee waived that we might could glean 
to be able to assist them, whether it's, you know, the e-delivery, which is, you know, low-hanging fruit or something like that, um, I would just be curious what we could do to assist them in getting that fee waived. Yep. So let me take that back um, and find out for you. I believe the simplest is going to be to have them sign up for e-delivery, but let me see what information I can get. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. This last slide I find to be very informative. Um, this is how individuals are, are uh, I'm sorry, using the checking option. Um, so for contributions, Again, there's $25,000 in assets that have been placed in the account. But I find the withdrawal piece down at the bottom to be very informative. A lot of individuals are using their debit cards. We have almost $3,000 in transactions being processed with the debit card. Um, and then they do also, account owners do have the ability to go into their account with the census and process a withdrawal similar to how they would for a 529 plan um, the same way. And what happens is it appears exactly as, for example, a 529 withdrawal would appear qualified withdrawal to account owner in this particular case. Um, up in the fees section, again, this is another breakdown um, of the monthly fee. Now, this information is also as of December, I'm sorry, as of February 2021. Um, so $77.88 in fees. And so here it shows the monthly maintenance fee for 33 accounts. And this is why I need to take your question back regarding fees being waived. Some of those accounts may have a zero balance. So we may only be looking at 33 accounts that get charged the monthly fee. Does anybody have any questions on this? So you're saying 33 of those may be that 159? That does not currently have it. That is correct. That is correct. We may um, be looking at about 120 accounts uh -huh. that have a zero balance, but I want to take that back and get that information. Uh, okay. from That's all that I have. Does anybody have any other questions? Um, the one thing that I would like to touch on as well are the um, new federal regulations that have just recently come out for ABLE programs. Um, we will be giving an update during the next monthly a Census Alliance meeting next Thursday, um, but we have made some great headway. Um, we have been able to assign a project manager. So at this point, we are going through the regs uh, to determine what we need to do. For example, is it something on the technical side or is there language we need to add to forms? Uh, we do understand that the hierarchy is the top priority for the ABLE programs to enact um, so we can get more of these accounts opened without having to rely on guardianship or conservatorship documents. So there will be more to come next week during the monthly alliance and a census meeting. All right, any other questions? All right, is there any new business that needs to come before the committee? The, the, uh, the only thing I was going to mention was a uh, calendar holder uh, for our next meeting, uh, since we're getting into the summer months, would be to hold 
uh, Wednesday, June 10th at 10 a.m. as our next meeting. Hey, Mr. Joe, that works for me. Thank you, Jeff. And is that a Wednesday or a Thursday? That is a Thursday. That's okay. The 10th is a Wednesday? I think it's a Thursday. Yeah, I'm showing Thursday. Yeah, it's a Thursday. And that's all I have. Cool. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Hey, this is Joe. I move that we adjourn. All right. Is there a second? I second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Thank you all aye. very aye. much. I appreciate it. Stay safe today, and uh, hopefully we can get through a legislative session here uh, in the next few weeks. All right. Thanks, all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Hey, Grant. Hey, Fran.